What's up, folks? We're back here, Pat Performance. We're out in the garage today. We have got our beautiful IROC Camaro in here. Uh, during the winter time, I found a hot deal on a E85 carburetor. So I had purchased it. And it's been sitting on the shelf all winter. Yesterday was a nice day here in a beautiful state of Michigan. It was right around 50 degrees here close to Detroit. So we went ahead and got that E85 carburetor out of the box, slapped it on the motor, and drained all the gasoline out of the tank, poured some fresh E85 in there, winter blend E85. I don't have a tester or nothing yet, so I can't really tell you how good it was but we filled her up hit the key the thing fired right up uh, took it for a ride ended up having to jet it up a little bit and uh, it's still it's still not fat enough it's still too lean it's got a real bad lean spot so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a little piece of aluminum just a little traditional piece of aluminum here and we're gonna go ahead drill a hole cut some threads for some jets and use that as a jig for the drill press and we're gonna drill out some jets today uh, I also got some fresh spark plugs for it probably gonna put those in there today and I got some oil we're gonna do an oil change and stuff but I don't know how far we'll get today um, I do want to start with the spark plug so we'll be doing that first but then we'll make this jig for the jets. The only reason I'm going to drill the jets out is for one, because I'm impatient. And for two, it costs $9 for two jets. Uh, and that was old prices at the uh, speed shop. But he doesn't have any jets big enough. So this carburetor on this current motor, I have 98s in the front <clears throat> on the primary side. Got 104s in the back. I believe the carburetor is a 950 Holly Ultra uh, XP. Uh, it's got nice billet metering blocks, and then one of these companies around here, I did some work to it, supposedly. The carburetor was supposed to be built for a 415 cubic inch small block that was supposed to make a ton of power. The original jets that were in there, I don't, I don't see how that was possible. But anyways, <coughs> so like I was saying the jets are like 10 bucks for a pair to get two right he didn't have the sizes I wanted or needed I'm thinking probably about a hundred and two in the front and 108 in the back will probably get me really close to being right where it needs to be um, but I have some really old jets laying around here this is just one of the boards I have another board that's got a ton of like 60s uh, size jets on there so I'm gonna take some of those I'm going to figure out the whole sizes of the jets that are in there now and just make a good educated guess upon a little bit of research to drill them out and get the sizes I am looking for uh, I don't see anything wrong with it it's gonna work perfect but anyhow so this is where we're at I did I got a fresh set of plugs today for the car I got some uh, race plugs, um, so we're gonna put those in there. They're they're a little bit hotter. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing on the ethanol. Whether I should have went colder or hotter, I'm not sure. Uh, I've seen a lot of controversy back and forth on whether to go hotter or colder. I've seen a lot of controversy back and forth on timing and stuff like that with the motor. <clears throat> I run a race car on methanol. Uh, I run it with just a mid-range plug it's not real hot it's not real cold it's like right in the middle uh on that car with that motor uh which is pretty identical to the motor that's in this car and i didn't change the timing in that motor or nothing it seemed to like it it ran really good the only thing i had to do with that carburetor when i had got it from the company that i had spec it and build it for me I had them spec it and build it to a different motor, the motor that I'm waiting to get back from the machine shop. So when I put it on the other motor, it was just really fat. Uh, 
All I did was lean her out a little bit and send her on her way. But that's here nor there. Different car, different project. We're working on this one. I'll flip the camera around and give you guys a taste of what it looks like underneath the hood of this car, and uh, we'll go from there. So this is our decent looking 88 IROC here. I got bed sheets on here because I got cats that live in this garage and they love to climb on my cars. But this IROC is far from original. It's got a big block 454. This was an original, I know you guys are probably going to hate me, but this was an original L98 TPI 350 700R4 trans. Had the 9 inch bog warner or a 9 bolt uh, bog warner rear end in it. We got rid of that. Didn't make enough power. Put a big block 454 in here. We have a T56 six speed in it. And inside the car is nothing fancy. It came from the factory. This is how the car came from the factory for the most part. You know, the seats are a little beat up and carpet's dirty. That'll clean out of there. I did install a Grant steering wheel. That button is not for nitrous people. That is just a two-step button. But anyhow, this is the inside of the car. The car does have a four nine inch in it with four 10 rear gear on I believe a 28 inch tall tire. <laughs> first gear is useless. It's just, <laughs> yeah, for, there is, there's no first gear. I mean, you're winding this thing out, it's only doing 25 miles an hour and screaming 6,000 RPM in first gear. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So uh, we don't really, uh, you know, when we're racing, we don't, we don't use first gear. We only use second. We start in second. Uh, we don't like setting tools down on the paint. So we're going to put a rag there so we can set our tools on it. Now this car is not exactly the easiest car to get the spark plugs out especially on this side but it's not the hardest car i've ever done them on <clears throat> but this side does get tricky uh, down here in the back by the steering stem and around the booster and then you have the clutch slave hydraulic line that runs back here so uh it, it does get quite fun I did forget I bought a socket for this and got so many different projects around here I forget where I put my tools sometimes whether they're in the car trailer or here in the garage or in a tote bag because I went somewhere but anyhow we got the right one on there now we're gonna get a shorter extension I'll get the first plug out of course we're gonna take the easier plug and I'm curious to see how these plugs look. So I'm gonna take the easiest plug first, just because I'm curious. And this spark plug is actually not all that bad. If I was running it on gas on the street, I'd probably say it needs to be leaned out a little bit more. But I kind of like the color. I always tune my dirt bikes and four wheelers for this color. I would have to say the spark plug probably started to clean up a little bit after running it on a E85. I did a couple pulls with it down the street yesterday. So I would assume that the ethanol probably started cleaning it up but it doesn't look all that bad it doesn't look all that great but it's not terrible it's not quite as rich as Elon Musk but it's definitely close not bad 
Not bad at all. I, I'd like to. Oh, look at that. It's got a different plug in that cylinder. What is that? It's one, that's three. Cylinder one had an NGK. Cylinder three's got an Excel. Excel! That must mean it excels the spark. I don't know. Anyhow, it's a 496. Huh. I wonder what heat range that one is compared to the other one. Who knows? See, people? Who knows what I was doing when I did this stuff? I have to figure something out for that hydraulic line because it was wedged in between the steering stem and the header. No wonder why the clutch would fade when the motor got hot. That explains it. <laughs> Where I come from, you don't need a clutch. You got to rev that motor up high enough. Just bang them gears. You know, you just feather off that gas pedal a little bit. And just pow in the next gear. Pow in the next gear. That's how you do it. That's, I mean, hell. Yeah. If you can't find them, find them. Just get them in there, bud. Seriously, though, if you're good enough, you can downshift without the clutch. That one's a little harder to master. But once you master it, it's a lot of fun showing off to your buddies. Because none of them can do it. So we're just pulling the spark plug wires off the cylinders. And then laying them up so we kind of know where they go. we got two, four, six, and eight. They'll plug right down in where they need to go when we're ready. I can already tell you that this side of the car has an Excel plug right here, not a NGK. That one's got a little bit of oil on it. <coughs> Shiny, look, that's an old plug, boy. Looks like the header gasket might be leaking right here. So we'll have to address that. Smells funny. Smells like burnt toast and jelly. Strange. Oh yeah. Mom, yeah. was coloring this part. Yeah, she hasn't had an oil change in a while. One of the things I always like to do, which I didn't do when I began this project, and I should have, is I like to cover the carburetor. Well, you just never know. You never know what can happen. You get mad and you throw a, a tool over your head, next thing you know it goes down in the carburetor. I mean, the chances of it making it past the butterflies are pretty thick, but you never know. So you just got to protect the carburetor because that's precious. Leads down into the combustion chambers and that's where the magic happens. Where the ho horse paw sings. All right, so what we're getting ready to do is, I don't know if you can see it, but we put a ratchet on the crank and we're gonna roll the motor over until it hoofs air out of cylinder number one. Yay. After we stick our, if we can get our finger on the hole. Right there. Let's see if that works any better. Dad. What? There's chalk on your car. There's what? There's, There's chalk on my car. Yeah, from Daddy Ella. No, 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 no. There we 
we go. Tough and air. We just got our figure in a hole. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay. So it's about done hoofing air. All right, so what you just seen us doing there is we were finding top dead cylinder, or sorry, top dead center on cylinder number one. So I could see where the harmonic balancer line lined up with the timing tab. I had the timing light on it the other day and it was kind of erratic. And it was really hard to decipher how much timing I had, but it looked like I had like 20 something degrees of timing at idle and that's too much that's not right so I was just making sure I knew where zero was on the timing tab so I can now when I throw the timing light on it I can back the timing off and put it right where it needs to be so that's all we did we put a socket on the crank pulley with all the spark plugs out of it stick your finger over number one hole, uh, this is for big block, small block Chevy. I believe it's the same on Fords and Mopars. As long as you're in cylinder number one, when it starts hoofing air on your finger, you're on a compression stroke and you bring them up. And if you have something soft, piece of solder or something, I use screwdrivers, not the right way, but it works. Uh, Cause valves aren't opening, so you're not worried about it pinching anything. But you stick something long skinny down inside there and you keep twisting the crank over in your rotation that the motor spins and a piston will start to dwell sometimes they dwell 5 10 15 degrees and you just want it to dwell while you keep looking at your harmonic balancer until it kind of quits dwelling um, the right way to do it's with the cylinder head off of there you use a dial indicator and you find out how long it dwells for, for how many degrees, and then you would divide that in half, and that's where you would put your timing pointer uh, for number one on your harmonic balancer. So if you run a nice uh, aftermarket uh, timing pointer that's adjustable, that way you find out where your true zero is at for ignition timing. But I don't, I don't have that. I just got the stock tabs and stuff on this motor here. So that's what that process was. I figured I'd explain it a little bit better and trying to explain it through that little tiny camera there that I can hardly see anything. So anyhow, we know where our, our timing mark's at. We got all the plugs out. We're going to go ahead and gap these other plugs and get them installed. So when gapping your spark plugs, you got to have yourself a gapping tool. And I don't really know a good... You know, each application is going to be different, whether you run a nitrous, whether you're running a turbo, uh, if you're naturally aspirated. Uh, I just recently switched the car to E85, so I don't know a lot about it. Um, and I'm not 100% sure what heat range to run. Um, so we're just taking a ballpark guess to get us started for now, and we, we can always adjust as time goes on once we learn more, figure out a little bit more. So anyhow... We just got a, a Champion race plug. It's the only thing that the uh, speed shop had in stock today for me. Uh, and I figure it's just a start. These were cheaper than the NGKs. So I figure it's just a place to start. I'm going a little bit on the hot side. I know some of you E85 aficionados out there are going to tell me you probably got to go colder. Um, you got to run a cold plug. I don't know what's right, what's wrong. I mean, my philosophy is, is you're jamming two times the amount of fuel inside that cylinder than what you were on gasoline. So my theory is, is that a hotter plug is just going to be a more efficient burn because the plug is going to stay warmer, right? Because just because we're running a hotter plug doesn't necessarily mean the chamber, uh, the, the cylinder is getting hotter. It means that the plug 
doesn't dissipate the heat as fast so in turn the plug stays warmer now that can cause a few things you can get into detonation um, you can get into the motor dieseling the motor won't shut off when you turn it off it'll just diesel and keep running um, I think with the alcohol and alcohol being prone to draw moisture and being um, it's detonation resistant uh, running alcohol based fuels so we're gonna try this heat range we're gonna see what happens I want to say this is a six heat range on the NGK scale and we're gonna start our gap off at about 35 thousandths and see where that gets us so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna run through and gap these tools or these spark plugs now there's a little scale on your gapping tool whether you got one similar to this or you have one of the round ones that you get from your typical auto parts store which I don't have one handy right now but they're round they got a scale on them this one's just a little nicer now I used to index these spark plugs per cylinder that way the electrode pointed everybody's got their different philosophy that some people say you want the electrode pointed at the intake valve some people say you want it pointed right at the piston I'm one of those people that like it pointed right at the piston uh, my philosophy of it being pointed right at the piston means the fire is going to blow up and push right down at the piston uh, I'm not going to index the plugs on this motor I have a tool that I made for indexing for this motor I don't know where that went it's been so long since I put spark plugs in this motor that tools like that that have been made well folks they magically disappear it's hard telling where it went what I did with it or where I put it it's somewhere I'll tell you that and I will say when I'm not looking for it I'll probably find it we'll take a quick look and see if I can find it real fast but I'm under the distinct impression that I will not find it nope didn't find it I got one more place to look though all right those are gapped we're going to put some anti-seize on them I'm going to find that indexing tool so you have to make these when the cylinder head is off of the motor and <clears throat> they got washers or shims that you could put on a spark plug to index it <clears throat> they're indexing washers but typically what you can do and sometimes you have to have a couple sets of spark plugs to get the right ones but you thread it you make your indexing tool you drill a hole in it and then you're going to tap it to a spark plug thread size here and with the cylinder head off of the motor you can thread these into each cylinder head hole until you find the right one that points in the area of your desire whether you want it at the intake valve exhaust valve or pointed down at the piston and when i say point i mean the electrode strap there you want it to point wherever whether you want it at the intake exhaust or straight down at the cylinder head or piston i mean so with the cylinder head off the engine you can thread them inside each hole until you find which one it works and you see you know you're going to have if you're putting a motor together and stuff you're going to determine what head you want on what side of the motor so you're going to mark bank one bank two on the cylinder head and then you just go through them two four six eight and you say okay this one works in cylinder eight so you have your 
piece of aluminum here or whatever you make it out of uh, I chose aluminum I got a couple plexiglass ones um, but anyhow after you find out which one which hole on the cylinder head it works good and we'll say cylinder 8 you can thread it in your tool here and this one points in between six and five for this one and that'll tell you I, I have this one already labeled but we'll say it worked good in cylinder uh, and, and hole number eight cylinder number eight it worked good in that spot on the cylinder head you would then just draw your line you would then just strike your line and write cylinder number eight right there and then right on the side of this thing what engine it's for so you don't get confused because I've got like seven or eight of these things but uh, <clears throat> anyhow so that's all there is to indexing your spark plug uh, in a nutshell summed it up kind of quick there I'm gonna go look at the old spark plugs to see if those were indexed correctly because it does have numbers on those spark plugs so I'm gonna go look and see if this is in fact the correct indexing tool for this motor I would assume it is because it was in my toolbox and not in the other toolbox or in the trailer so I'd assume this is the right one for this motor but I'm just gonna go verify by looking at the other spark plugs to yeah. show you a, a quick little tech tip um, just in case you're struggling uh, in between the headers and trying to get the spark plug in the hole you can cut yourself a little piece of rubber hose or you can use like a, a straight spark plug boot if you have any of those laying around and you're going to just take your spark plug and you will press it down in it up over the porcelain like so and put some anti-seize on it it's ready to go this will be easier to thread in you get it started threaded and then you can pull the rubber off of there, pull the rubber off of there, put your socket on there, tighten it up, good to go. This quick little tech tip for you. So we went ahead and we found ourselves a couple drill bits here. This one's basically gonna be the pilot using a size 61 jet here. So it's got no hole really. I mean, you can hardly see through the hole. So I'm going to use a small drill bit to make sure it's straight. Uh, this will find the hole that's already there a lot easier than the bigger bit will. I took a... I went ahead... Hold on. I went ahead and... I Google searched uh, orifice sizes for Holly carburetors and found the number that I was looking for for what size drill bit to use. So I just took a, I got a, a, a pretty decent digital micrometer here. This isn't your Harbor Freight Special. This actually came from a, a really high-end CNC shop. But anyhow, I mic'd out the bit with that, and it tells me that I'm, I'm right there. I'm within the number that I'm looking for. I'm trying to turn this jet into a 102-size uh, jet, which is... Uh, 132 thousandths size drill bit that you would use. I have a 131 and a half size drill bit here. So that's going to work for what I'm after. I'm going to use a small cordless drill. Um, we're going to turn the speed way down on it. And we're going to go ahead and start drilling these holes. Going to try to stay as straight as we can and everything. I could chalk it up in a drill press. But these bits are so small that they're not the the press isn't hardly going to grab these bits. So we're going to do this by hand and hope that our uh, experience takes over here. I put the jets inside a super old, junky, nasty uh, metering block that I had laying around in the garage here. I don't know what it's for. It's probably a number matching metering block for a, a '69. Cobra 429 jet, I don't, whatever, who cares? I don't care. Anyhow, here we go.
Now if you do this to your jets yourself, I recommend cleaning them thoroughly. Now we are going to take a tiny little chamfer bit and I am going to chamfer this back hole a little bit. I can't chamfer the front because I don't have a countersink bit to get in there. But I am going to chamfer the back. This also is not your standard uh, flathead screwdriver. This thing has a fancy little tip on it for it really grabs the jet for you. If you don't have one of those, get one of those. I don't know where it came from. I found it at Grandpa's stash. <laughs> hey, I'll let me go get the chamfer bit and we'll touch this real quick. This here is just your uh, standard counter sinking bit we're gonna go ahead and just take this bit we're gonna go on the back of our jet here that we just drilled out and we're just gonna do it by hand I think that is all there is to it folks we're gonna hit this with some carb cleaner hit it with some air and then uh, we'll install it in the so motor. So this carburetor is kind of fancy. It's a Holly HP. Uh, Horsepower Innovations is the one who redid this carburetor and set it all up, supposedly. I don't really know. Uh, I, I bought it second hand. But either way, this carburetor is kind of fancy because it's got a drain plug down here on the float bowl. So we can put a, you could take a, uh, an oil quart bottle and you can slice it down to about yay size you can make it the length of it which is cool because it'll give you a, a cap on the end for easy pouring not that that really matters but anyhow it's kind of cool so you can put something underneath there you can pull that plug and you can let it drain into your uh, little catch can that you put down there that you make to put down there um, if you don't have one of the fancy drain plugs on it you can just simply pull a bottom bolt out of the float bowl and you can let the bolt go out and hang and the gas will run there, the fuel or whatever fuel you're using will run down that bolt and into your little container that you put down there to catch it. And then you can stick a couple rags underneath here for the leftover that's inside the bowl. Uh, it's 5 16 bolts usually to get these off here. So our biggest thing is when you put these back on here is you want to do a cross pattern just so you make sure you don't warp nothing and the other thing is is that you really don't want to over tighten these man you got to be take it from somebody that has learned an easy way or two it's real easy to strip off these bolt holes i i mean i'm, I'm not kidding they're just one second they're there the next second they're gone and you're like, how do I tighten my float bowl now up? It's leaking everywhere. The trick is to get a little longer bolt. Alright, the metering block came with it today. And of course, it's not popping free. Sometimes a simple plastic hammer will work, sometimes it won't. Like in this case, it's not. There it goes. Oh, now it falls out. So the jets are in the same exact spot as they were on that other metering block. We're going to unthread these jets, thread the ones that we just drilled out in there. We're going to do the 102 in the front. This is your primary side. And then we'll put it all back together and do the back.
All right, now we're gonna work on the back. This was that little uh, court thing I was telling you you could cut to make. It goes right underneath the float bowl. Catch pretty much all your fuel for you. That one's a little bit too long for this application on this car, but it'll work. It is a little cold. It is running. Water temps only at 67. Good all pressure. We're idling around 7, 800. Got about what? 12.5, 13 0. Air fuel ratio at idle. Yeah. 